The MTA understood where we were with this global pandemic. They stepped up operations and were cleaning trains and buses every 72 hours, which is an amazing undertaking when you think about it, uh, to clean all those buses and trains every 72 hours. But we know the virus can live for hours or even days on a surface, which means if somebody positive walks onto a train this morning, that virus can be there tomorrow and the next day. Let's clean, disinfect those trucks, those buses and trains every 24 hours. Why? Because that's the way we best protect the health of our essential workers. And I challenge the MTA to come up with a plan. They came up with a plan. They can disinfect all trains and buses every night. It can best be done by stopping train service from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. every night during the pandemic so they can actually perform this service. Now, remember the context that we're in in this pandemic. Ridership is down 92 percent. One to five are these slow hours, 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, it's the lowest ridership. Uh, estimate is about 10,000 people run the system, uh, ride the system overall during that period of time. So the MTA will launch what they call the Essential Connector Program. They'll have buses, dollar vans, and if necessary, will provide four higher vehicles to transport a person, uh, the Uber, the Lyft, the via, via vehicles, at uh, no cost to the essential worker during those hours to provide transport. Uh, trains and buses will be disinfected daily. Service will continue. The MTA will also disinfect the fleet on the MTA, uh, the Metro North and the Long Island Railroad, which is what goes out to Long Island and goes to the northern suburbs. Uh, they can do that uh, without any disruption in service because of the volume of ridership, et cetera. So just think about it. The entire public transit system in downstate New York will be disinfected uh, every 24 hours. This is uh, a joint MTA state city partnership. We are doing a lot of things here that we've never done before. And I am never one to shy away from a challenge. I don't believe government has that option. I'm never one to say, well, that's just too much, too hard, too ambitious. We can do it. I believe we can do it. I believe we can do anything. I believe we can build bridges. I believe we can build airports. I believe we can defeat global pandemics. But. Uh, this is as ambitious as anything that we've ever undertaken. Uh, and it's going to require a lot of extraordinary service and effort from multiple agencies all working together. Last week, we announced that Michael Bloomberg would lead the first ever testing tracing isolation program. The estimate so far is you need 30 contact tracers for every 100,000 people who are in the affected area. Statewide, that would be about 6,400 to 17,000 tracers, depending on what happens on the testing rate. The more people test positive, the more tracers. Uh, and Mayor Bloomberg has put together a great team who's going to work on this. He has great talent in his uh, Bloomberg philanthropy, Johns Hopkins University, working together with the New York State Department of Health. Where do you get the Army? Well, we have Department of Health employees all across the state. Counties have them. Cities have them. The state has them. You also have a lot of government employees who are at home now getting paid but are not working. What government employees who are now existing, city, state, county, can we deploy to become tracers and then train them, et cetera. After you go through all of that, if you don't have enough, you're going to have to hire people. Uh, and then you have to train them, 
right away, because nobody's done this before. They're going to need help. They're going to need technology. They're going to need monitoring. They're going to have to be tested before they can do this. So it's a massive undertaking. And that's why uh, Mayor Bloomberg's involvement and his generosity here is so important. They get the contract tracing program up and running a lot has to happen first in hiring, training, deploying, and managing a small army of New Yorkers, as the governor said, is really the great challenge. To help the state recruit contact tracers, we've brought in a staffing organization. And we're also teamed up with CUNY and SUNY, both of which will help identify potential job applicants. And I want to thank both of them for their work in joining us. To help the state with training, Johns Hopkins has developed a training class which can be taken remotely. It will cover all the basic information of epidemics, contact tracing, and privacy. There's also a test at the end of the training, which you have to pass in order to be hired. So we're not going to put up people there that don't know what they're doing. We'll also put technology to use in other ways. Vital Strategies is developing three new smartphone apps. The first will help contact tracers find information and data quickly. The second will help the public provide information to health departments. And the third will allow those in quarantine to access the guidance and services they need, including the ability to report any symptoms they may be experiencing. Vital Strategies is also working directly with the state to develop protocols and workflow materials for contract tracers and managers. That includes a comprehensive playbook that will detail the steps needed to do contact tracing effectively. And I want to make it clear, we will release that playbook publicly so cities and states around the country can use it, and so can nations around the world. We'll also bring in a group of outside experts to conduct an evaluation of the program so that other states and countries can see what worked well and identify areas they can improve on. And we'll learn as we go and make adjustments and share what we've learned.